In this video, I'm going to share with you the top three brainstorming techniques to generate profitable ideas for business. G'day, it's Mills Vest from Ideas with Legs here, where we help people turn ideas into paychecks. Now, if you've ever looked for brainstorming techniques on Google, well, you'll know there are a lot of different brainstorming techniques out there. And it's really tricky to work out which of them are the most effective or while trying to remember them all. So I've spent a ton of time checking with my clients from the last 20 years to find out which ones I've taught them are the most effective and most used, all to help you start brainstorming ideas to generate brilliant business results. Oh, and make sure that you stick around to the end because I'm also going to share with you my top brainstorming facilitation tips to help you generate better ideas faster using any brainstorming technique at all. And well, if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does make a difference. Okay, on to the top three proven brainstorming techniques so you can create profitable business ideas faster, easier, and with less stress. So brainstorming technique number one, substitution. Now the, thought, the core thinking you wanna have for this technique is to ask yourself, what can I substitute to reinvent my business product process or service results. And that, for example, might be something like, what material could I substitute when building my product? What process could be substituted with another step? Or what could I substitute in how I distribute components? Or maybe you might be thinking about, what could I substitute in what I sell or how I go about selling? Now, the substitution technique is not complex, yet it can be applied to a whole stack of different areas, whether they're broad or in a particular niche. For example, materials is a relatively abstract term, yet the more you can make it concrete and specific by narrowing it as a category with some practical terms underneath, you can get some different types of ideas. Say for example, could you substitute a key person in a project team? Or could you substitute a key ingredient or an accelerant? Could you substitute the onboarding process with another? Or could you substitute the location, the tone of voice, and color? Could you substitute an enticement or perhaps a reward? So if you can keep your substitution questions close to a pain point that you might have identified, it will really help you to stay focused on creating ideas faster without heading off on that time-consuming tangent. Okay, brainstorming technique number two. And this one is all about combination. What could you combine that you haven't combined before? Now, combining elements never connected before is one of the classic ways to innovate and reinvent your results. In fact, Gendrik Altschuler, <laughs> a famous Russian pattern assessor, realized that the most commercially successful patterns were the ones that combine components or processes from different industries to create a new superior invention. So to create a combination mindset, what you need to do is to ask yourself, what could you combine that's never been combined before that will allow you to address a problem or a pain point or to innovate? And you can use this combination technique in many ways. Could you combine the existing or separate application forms into one simple application form? Could you blend one material with another? Or what if you combined your service offerings with a similar business in a different territory? You might ask yourself, what products could be bundled together to sell that you haven't considered before? So I want to give you a bit of a commercial example of this combination brainstorming technique. Now, I'm sure you've heard of IKEA with a name like Mills Vesk. I probably should be in an IKEA catalogue and actually have been. Talk to you about that another time. But the furniture store IKEA discovered that a customer insight, and that is that the furniture you buy from a store might not fit amazingly well when you get it at home, or it may just not look great. It may be too big, or it just doesn't seem to suit the room. And a clear, valuable custom insight that they realized with that was, could we somehow then generate some ideas by combining a catalog with some form of augmented reality AR so that a customer could actually see what a piece of furniture would look like in their own space at home. And they also asked, what if we could also combine a measuring tape with the actual dimensions of the IKEA product so that it will actually appear to the exact scale in the room? 
And the result was an app called IKEA Place. Also, mostly works on iOS devices. And what this app does is it measures the chosen space using the device's technology, all of those cameras, and then it places the selected product to scale in the chosen space image, meaning a customer can quickly assess what that product, whether it's a chair or a table, will look like and how it's going to fit into the room with its actual dimensions. So it means the customer can immediately see what that product and how it will fit in the space as well. Now, so by now you should have seen the possibility of all of these different combinations. You want to think about all of those combinations you could be looking for. Is it, say for example, physical with digital? Maybe it's a product with a service. Just remember to keep focused on any pain points you've identified. Okay, on to our final brainstorming technique. Number three, elimination. This has got to be one of my favorites. The question you might ask yourself is what could you eliminate? Now, elimination is definitely my most favorite idea generation technique. And it's a favorite because when I'm really stumped for solutions, when I feel like Bleh, I've hit that roadblock and I just can't get past it, it always seems to break that mental stalemate. Now, a little bit of word of warning, this method can be a little bit disconcerting as it kind of forces you to think very differently. Here's how we start. So I want you to think of a pain point that you might have identified somewhere in your business. Um, or there might be a process that's a bit cumbersome or even a product. And you ask yourself, force yourself to ask yourself, what could you eliminate? Perhaps there's a, a long-standing process that's never changed that you could get rid of, um, or a step in that process. Maybe there's a long-held belief of how a business has to be run that could be improved. For example, you know, uh, by asking yourself, we can no longer do face-to-face -face business. I think ING Bank was the first bank to ask that daring elimination ideation question. So eliminating something that may not be useful anymore is relatively simple. Yet challenging yourself to eliminate a critical step, now that's really going to force your brain to work. Now you're probably not going to like this feeling, that's okay, you can blame it on me, but that's also what we would call change. Now if your brain feels uncomfortable, just tell yourself, okay, it's okay to feel this way, it's just my way that the brain is changing. So I want you to take a moment to think of an untouchable task or you know, some thinking that you could dare to eliminate. So here's some out there examples. A lawyer who can no longer charge by the hour, or a restaurant that can no longer have in-house diners, or a butcher who can't cut meat, a beautician who can't touch a customer. Yeah, I know these sound really far-fetched, yet when taken seriously, that elimination method will force you to make new neural connections. You have to imagine that if you actually had to do business this new way, what would you need to do differently to survive? And trust me, this one really does work. It's uncomfortable, it's gonna feel like you're jumping off a cliff, but it really does work. Okay, so let's start to sum this up. Here's what you've learned in this video. Um, you've learned that really being flexible is, is, is kind of the key to generating innovative ideas. We also know that everyone can be creative. Uh, most importantly, you might want to think of number one, think of what you might be able to substitute. Challenge yourself there. You might then think about what could you combine that you haven't combined before. And number three was what could you do around uh, eliminating a component that you haven't eliminated before. All right, so now it's time for the bonus that I mentioned earlier in the video. I said that I was gonna share with you my top brainstorming facilitation techniques to help you generate better ideas faster using any kind of brainstorming technique. So here's tip number one. Now the tip number one is to set a goal for the number of ideas that you wanna generate. Now that might sound really basic, but the reality is that you need to create quantity in order to get quality ideas. So write down the goal, for example, 50 ideas and go for it. Put it on a poster, put that target, and after each little session, tabulate the number of ideas that we're going for. And really do stretch yourself because if you only say, I only want 10 ideas, you're gonna get 10 ideas. Go for 50 and you're gonna get 50 ideas and of those 50, 10 will probably be fantastic. All right, tip number two, set a time limit. Now, setting a time constraint will force you and your people to focus and it will really help you to generate more ideas 
than if you actually just set a shorter time limit than you think is com comfortable. So rather than say we're going to do you know 50 ideas in 30 minutes, uh, we're going to go 10 I uh, 20 ideas for this little technique that's three minutes, 20 ideas for the next one, and so on. All right, next little tip, tip number three, one golden rule you must have is no slanging of ideas. That means no bagging of anyone else's ideas. And be very strict on this because nothing shuts a brainstorming session down faster than someone slanging or laughing at someone else's ideas. All right, tip number four is to review and evaluate your ideas at a later session if you can. Put it back until a little bit later. The reason why we do this is that the mind needs time to change its thinking and it'll enable it to become more objective when assessing the merit of ideas. Really, if we try and do it there and then we're going to mix it up and we're probably going to eliminate or say no to some ideas that are actually really good. Give yourself a break, at least a couple of hours if you can. All right, tip number five, and that is give everyone bright colored post-it notes to write their ideas down. Now here's why. Colour excites the mind. It wakes you up and having those ideas on post-it notes means that you can stick them up on a wall or on posters and move them around and say, hey, these are the ideas we want to move forward. Tip number six, finally, make it fun. Uh, you can do this by a number of different ways. Add some music, um, not too loud. Um, and you know, there'll be some people that don't like your music, that's okay, but it just helps to distract the mind a little bit to get you off things and focus things. Next thing is to get people to stand up and share with the person next to them before sharing with the group. The reason why is that most people, um, even me a copper, most people are scared of public speaking and sharing ideas in reality is, is a form of public speaking. Okay, so that's almost it from me. Ooh, one more thing that I know that if you really want to help accelerate your innovative business growth results is to work out what type of innovator you are. And I've got a free three-minute quiz that will help you to work out your innovation code. And it actually will spit out, well, not spit out, it will actually create a customized innovation playbook full of proven innovation hacks for your specific stage of innovation. Now, you can do the innovation quiz at the innovationquiz.biz, and the link is in the notes. Thanks so much for watching, and go and make your next brainstorming session prolific. We'll catch you later.